more lies. Hey guys, Rob from Georgia here with you, aka BHS82 apostrophe. It is week 542. I'm your regular Wednesday evening host. Here at Body Bags. It is Wednesday. Um, it is uh second weekend, so it's uh it is a label this week. It is Anchor Bay, I believe it's volume two. And uh, and so I thought I'd take this opportunity to take a look at a film that might have escaped, might have escaped some of you. Uh, it is Lost After Dark, um, a film by Ian Kessner, um, starring. Uh, well, really, probably not going to know anyone in the cast, um, but Robert Patrick's in this thing, and he plays the principal of uh, of the school in question here. Um, and so basically what you have here is you have uh, you have your cast of characters. You meet Adrienne first. She's set up. And I'm going to go spoilers, man. Full on spoilers. So if you've ever seen Lost After Dark, you might not want to listen to this. You might want to just... Uh, let me just say, if you're really infatuated with the, uh, the nostalgic um, imitation, attemptively love letters to the 80s... Um, I think this is cheap enough uh, to just go ahead and blind buy. If you're really infatuated with those films of late, um, I think this is this has some interesting decisions. Um, I don't think it's the nearly the best of what we could have got from this movie. But I'm gonna just I'm gonna talk freely about it as though you've already seen it. And if you have it, but you don't care. Uh, my guest uh but if you do care then exit now basically you know we meet adrian first who is set up to be our final girl who ultimately does not is not our final girl um and, and so there is a few interesting um decisions made here and i'm only going on one viewing watch this friday night um just a couple nights ago and uh so i'm only going off one viewing and uh, there comes a point in the film where I, I really started to become engaged. Um, but from the beginning up to that point, it, I'll be honest, it was a little bit of a struggle. Um, we meet Adrian in the beginning, her and her dad. Um, their mom has recently passed away. Um, she is a, uh, for all intents and purposes, she is the, uh, she's a good girl. She's an A student. Um, but they're, the family's reeling um, from the loss of, uh, of the mom. And, uh, and I want to say, too, the school, I don't think it's a public school. I think it's a private school based on a scene between Robert Patrick, who is the principal, and Adrian's father. When the kids go missing, uh, he'll make a visit to the house. And it's just sort of a, it's an awkward meeting. It doesn't really make a lot of sense unless you kind of sort of read in. And what happens, like, right after really doesn't make sense. Um, but Adrian, uh, Adrian has been coaxed. You know, she has a cab and her parent, her dad has, they have a cabin out in the woods and so her friends you get the idea that they've sort of coaxed her into hey uh be part of the uh escape from the spring dance uh we're gonna hijack a bus and we're just gonna go and uh let's go to your cabin yeah now she has a crush on sean who's a quarterback um and she's you know she's set up as someone who is sort of she's sort of in between you know you can kind of see on one side why sean um would be smitten with her but on the other side you're sort of you're sort of why um but it's not like really like that it's it, they play on that a little bit it's interesting and i guess that is a cliche from from these movies but uh she, so her best friend jamie who ultimately will become our final girl um and you got a slew of other characters here um toby of course is uh is our chubby kid um who in Marilyn, um, those two will sort of connect and you really do think that. And I really think it was a mistake not following through with those two becoming an item. A chubby kid hardly ever gets, I mean, he rarely ever gets the girl. And I wish this one would have been, th this could have been set up nicely for that actually to be. I really liked um, much of their interaction with one another. And then it just takes this weird turn. As soon as she shows her true colors, it's just sort of like, uh, I say cringy. I'm not sure what the, what, what the right word is. It is disappointing, though. Uh, Heather and um, Johnny, of course, are your uh, your uh, 
the, the couple that you don't like, of course. And Heather really irritates Johnny because she has, uh, unbeknownst to anyone, she has brought her little poodle dog with her, hitting the dog in a purse. Um, that initially makes absolutely no sense. Although they use it later on in the film, and it is the moment that I do become seriously engaged with the movie from that point forward. And I hope you don't judge me as a result of that. It's just, I don't think I've ever seen it in a movie before. Um, I mean, so you get these kids and, uh, and you, you know, Wesley is our African-American, our black character. Um, and I love, I really, I really dug him. I thought he was not your stereotypical, um, I, I, he did good. He really, really did good. Uh, Sean, in the end, uh, who makes a sacrificial um, decision to try to buy the other's time, was pretty decent, too. Um, Robert Patrick, of course, the principal, plays Mr. C. He's got some serious PTSD issues from Vietnam, which becomes extremely hilarious when he ultimately does go after the kids and finds the bus and ultimately finds what's left of them. Uh, at the uh, Joe's house, the farmhouse out in the middle of the woods where everyone apparently has just forgotten about. But you get this huge summation at the end between uh, a couple of the cops. And you just wonder, after the events that they talk about, why didn't they just burn this house down to the ground? You have to wonder that uh, something that horrific, something like that happens. Um, burn the house to the ground, leave nothing. so salt into the earth so nothing ever grows back again and just let it grow over. Um, I don't know, it, it's, it's just whatever. But, um, and so you get these characters, you kind of get them all set up and they get out there on the bus and the bus, uh, of course, breaks down. You know, we would have it any other way. Uh, and uh, the, the jocks, um, the jocks kind of force Toby to walk the length of road to figure out you know, or try to find some help or something, right? And Marilyn goes with him, and that becomes an interesting, you know, that's when we start to begin to like the idea of these two maybe getting together. They will basically run, they will find the farmhouse out in the middle of nowhere. I think uh, it's, it's, it's a place they can shack up or, you know, um, base camp from or something. And so they'll go back and, uh, and get the others, and that's where your problems really begin to start happening when our antagonist, Junior Jode, who is like the only surviving member of this family that are, you know, sort of feral, cannibalistic, um, and, and at this point has been, just become a legend, right? And he uh, will show up and start, you know, doing what we love best. And uh, it is pretty funny that he, um, uh, he does look a lot like Rob Zombie. <laughs> when Rob Zombie was a killer in one of these movies. Pretty hilarious. Um, but there's a scene of, you know, when you get to the end, I'll see Robert Patrick. I, I alluded to this. He he shows up at uh, Adrian's, um, Adrian's house and uh, to talk with the dad to convince him that these kids have run afoul. They've stolen a bus and which is a really weird meeting of sorts. Um, and it's sort of you think the two are going to go save the kids. They're going to go look for the kids and see where they're at. But ultimately, and you don't know why, but Robert Patrick's Mr. C, suddenly when you do catch up with him and he, you know, arrives at the vacant bus on the side of the road, he's not without Adrian's dad. And he just was like, why didn't they just come together? Now her dad will come a little later on. It's just, I don't, I don't understand why they just didn't come together, which is weird. Cause they were armed um, and uh, they were armed. And, uh, and I don't know, it's just, it's just weird, um, weird. But it does set up for a really great confrontation between um, uh, Robert Patrick's character and the killer and his PTSD. <laughs> it is absolutely, it is funny. It is pretty funny. And he does, he is a real jerk principal and he's the kind that you just don't like. But in the end, you ultimately realize that, um, look, he's going, he's not gonna be your favorite principal at the end of the day. But at the end of the day, if need be, he is going to put his own life in jeopardy um, for his children, for the kids at school, right? Um, so in the end, I mean, it, it, it's, it almost becomes a little bit of a complex character, which is really, is really cool. Now, there's this one scene. Okay, so up to this scene, I'm going to mention. 
this is the pivot point of the movie for me. Up to this scene, I'm sort of like, I'm just riding, I'm struggling, I'm working with, I'm just like, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's just get this thing over with. You got uh, you got uh, Heather and Johnny hiding in a car in the barn. It, it's your typical, uh, the you know, the, the collected cars over time that are hidden somewhere under tarps or whatever, and they're hiding in one. Now she has brought her dog, right? Dog is making noise. The um, Johnny is just sort of like, right? He's like, do something, do something, do something. And he's kind of a character too that is a real jerk, but he also seems to be able to change his character in a redemptive way. Um, and so, I mean, there's some interesting things going on here amidst some of the not so great writing. So suddenly she, you look at her and she, you could tell her arms or her hands are in a motion where you're just like, no, you're, you're not going there. We're not going there, are we? We go there. She, without, you never see it, it's off screen, but you get the, you get the idea. She snaps the dog's head. And I thought to myself, I sat up and I thought, all right, we're in. We are in from this point forward. The problem is, if you're going to be that bold to make that kind of creative choice, you probably shouldn't cheapen that choice by having both of them die almost, you know, very soon. It's almost like, you know, you could have had two characters win ultimately. Uh, in the end, J Jamie and Heather. It could have been two girls in the end. The fact that she's willing to make that choice should have benefited her, I think, in some way that would have not that would have not cheapened the decision to kill her own dog. Because it's almost kind of like, well, you make that choice, and then for what for what purpose? You still you died anyways. Uh, and, and so, I mean, I think there was an opportunity lost there. Um, and so, I mean, and you find that throughout this movie quite often. And I would say Robert pa uh, Robert Patrick's character doesn't even really come into its own until he arrives there and actually finds the survivors and has his face off with the killer. Um, you know, you really do like Toby. Toby's a pretty decent character, I think. You know, some of these characters just grow on you. Marilyn sort of grows. That is until Marilyn shows her true colors. And then she's, you know. But you, yeah, these were these were characters you really could have liked. And with other certain decision-making, some better writing, this movie really could have. Now, at the end, at the day, when uh, uh, Jamie is... Uh, uh, being transported in the ambulance to the hospital, they bypass um, the ambulance carrying uh, Junior Jode, and of course, there's nothing left on the highway but you know uh, an ambulance where it's obvious it's the aftermath of Junior coming to his senses, and he is still alive. Uh, you think he's dead at the end. Uh, Jamie's uh, or not Jamie, uh, Adrian's father does show up and ultimately is instrumental in saving. Um, in saving Jamie, unfortunately, you you lose that whole ability of you know his loss of his daughter and coming to terms with that. I mean, there's so many lost opportunities in this movie that could have made it a really, really super special gem. And unfortunately, it's just another one of those. Hey, you remember the '80s? Well, yeah, I do. Okay, I lived through it. I was born in '70, so by '80, I'm 10. And, you know, it, it takes until 82, you know, I'm 12 and 13 before Fangoria starts to become instrumental in my life and, and the video store rental shops and everything else. So I, I'm pretty familiar, right, uh, with the slasher as they were. This is not a terrible attempt by any stretch. I wish I wish there was a commentary on it where we could hear the director talk his way through it in, in terms of creative decisions. And it's like the music could have been a lot better. And obviously all this stuff costs money, right? I mean, you're working within a set budget. And for what they were working with, to get Robert Patrick in there, his character could have been so much better. But what you ultimately get in the end, um, it, it's not a bad little nostalgic look at 
what some perceive the 80s slashers to have been, right? It's, it's kind of like one of those things. It's, it's not, if you're, like I said, if you, if you love the nostalgic throwbacks to the 80s, um, it's cheap enough. There's no reason why it shouldn't be on your, on your shelf. Um, in the end, is it one that you're going to go back to repeatedly? I don't know. I won't. Um, I'll throw it in again at some point. Um, although, I, like I said, I really do wish there was a commentary track on here by the director. Um, I would have easily gone, put it right back in and listened to it with the commentary um, to kind of get a sense of uh, some of the thought process in there. So in the, at the end of the day, it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, it, it's worth checking out, especially if you find it streaming, I guess. I really somebody who holds to physical media uh i would say if you love if you love this kind of thing just get it um add to your collection man find a cheaping add to your collection um yeah so lost after dark um anchor bay um it's nice to see anchor bay uh if you're old enough like me you remember how instrumental anchor bay was in the early uh beginnings of physical media in terms of um just horror movie releases and stuff uh, it's nice to see Anchor Bay all of these years later still in the game. And as Jason always says at over at uh, Horrific Nightmares, physical media does matter. As always, go Bills. This is not a dream. Not a dream. We might be useful to you.